Hey. Let's give a shit. I'm gonna bring up the tag. We love hip hop. What you know about this one? Tick, tick, you can This nigga got some sauce, bro. Don't kill me. What you know about this one, bro? Uh huh. Dang. Talk to him. Mmm. Eh? Okay. Let me back. Motivation. Sure. Yeah. You need the chauffeur to, 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 to get, get you moving around in, in the spot. You know what I'm saying? I got it now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, we're back. We got another one over here, over at the Visionary Arts Center. Big up the gutsy guts in the building. Wow, one, wow, one. You know what I mean? And and yo, we got a special one today. You know, um, I've been watching this gentleman doing his thing. I would say since 2018, you were on my radar. You know what I'm saying? Like real, real. Like this nigga's videos are are unique and the style is fresh. You know what I'm saying? So. With no further ado, for the people who are watching on YouTube who already see this gentleman here, they're like, I lie. Oh, shit. But for the listening audience, we got portion in the motherfucking building. You put some sound effects on there. What's up? Hey. So, y'all can give me the headphones and stuff like that. We can get right into it. You know what I'm saying? And before we even get into it, I want to give a big salute to Manscaped. You know what I mean? Manscaped is the one who is uh, supporting this episode that we're doing over here. And they, they, they are they are the um, the best in below the men's waist grooming champion. So it's, it's, it's a ball shaver. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying. No, it's Christmas time. We're getting to that time. You know what I mean? You know, they're, they're, we're doing a discount 20% off when you use the code We Love Hip Hop. But like, fam, the shotties, they appreciate that. You gotta that. grow. You gotta grow. Yes. Sleeky drug. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so imagine shaving with a sleek, well designed, and optimized trimmer that makes shaving time your favorite time in the bathroom. I'm one of the first people to try the 4.0 and I'm blown away by the performance. Real shit. I, I, really, I really tried it. And um, the craftsmanship and the details on the 4.0 are next level. Manscaped engineered the ultimate groin and body trimmer by focusing intelligent functionality and incre- incredibly comfortable grooming experience. The fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade that reduces grooming accidents thanks to the advanced skin safe technology. I now feel safe and confident shaving my boys. You know what I'm saying? But listen, we're doing a discount, okay? They have the 4000K LED light that's available on it with an on and off switch for precise shaving. You got one to four levels. You can put like a clip on it and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And get the, the perfect, perfect precision shaving. And we're offering right now 20% off plus free shipping with the code We Love Hip Hop at manscaped.com. Again, that's free shipping. With the code We Love Hip Hop, you'll get twenty percent off. All right, so it comes up to like maybe like a buck in, uh, at in the end, one hundred in the end. You know what I'm saying? Hit them up, Manscaped.com. If you support Manscaped, you support us over at the We Love Hip Hop Network. All right, your balls will thank you. Um, also, big salute to Canna B. Canna B is the one that's got us all super piffed out today. You know what I'm saying? They dropped off a big bag of piff but they got shatter all types of stuff hit them up canopy.ca hit them up on their website and you'll be able to get um whatever type of discount you know mention we love hip-hop we'll give you a discount on any product man them got grabber any any anything so hit them up canopy.ca c-a-n-n-a-b-e-e.ca see but let's get into it fam how you been fam i'm good shit i'm good shit always good yeah, 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 yeah. You, you're just coming back from LA. Yeah, I got back um, top of October. Mm-hmm. Got back, yeah. So it's just been working. So what was that trip like? What was the? Because you've been to LA a bunch of times. It's not the first time, but like this last trip in particular. Uh, this trip, I was really just working on the project. Um, it's about to come out. I was really just finishing that up, mm-hmm. um, mixes, master, all that type of stuff. Uh, working with new producers, different producers and shit. Just working, just regular shit. Even though out there in LA, like, are you getting to see like the, the, the stars? Because like we're over here in Toronto, we don't get to see Wagwan. You know what I'm saying? Are you bumping yeah. into like Brad Pitt and shit like that when you're walking on the street? <laughs> yeah, you bump into one too. You bump into 
like I see Black Boy JB at the store. Okay. Just random little, you know, mm -hmm. random little runnings. Roddy, um, Roddy Rebel I seen out there last time. A couple of different people. Different. Okay, so like. It's definitely different in Toronto though, like in terms of like just working. It's a work, this is a different work there. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, just got to get to it. And like, even in the studios and stuff like that, are you like recording out of home studios out there or is it just like, you know, are you moving around to like all these different studios that we hear about? Yeah, it depends. For me, um, I record a lot of my shit myself, so mm -hmm. I just be vibing at home sometimes. Uh, other times I'll be, um, I'll go to the studio, different studios in LA, a lot of different nights, but it's easier to get in the studios in LA because yeah. it's like everybody's willing to work. Down here, it's like kind of like, you know, you got to watch where you go and shit, so that's like... Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to get, like, a vision in my brain, right? And, and Gutsy, if you have any questions, jump in. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm trying to get a vision in my brain, like, of, like, a studio out there. It's like, you're in one room, and it's, like, a couple of doors down, fucking yeah. Bobby Schmurder recording a track. Yeah, just like that. It's really, it's it's really like, like, um, last time I was in the studio, London on the track was in the next room. Sick. He was, like, playing mad, like, summer walker shit, so... It was different. Mm. Was that before or after the breakup? <laughs> I don't even know. This was like maybe last month, so or sometime last month. So yeah, that was that was that. That was when I was recording um, a couple of songs for the Deluxe, mm -hmm. about to come out, but he was in the next room. So okay, okay. Give me one crazy one where you're like, holy, because London is cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a producer. You know I mean, you're like, oh, I, I'm going to connect and get a beat from him. But somebody that was in the next room at, at one of your sessions that you're like, a lie. So-and-so's over there? Holy fuck. Uh, shorty, you know Shorty Shorty? Shorty Shorty. Shorty Shorty. Yeah, Gutsy, help me. I'm, I'm old. Yeah, shorty yeah, 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 Shorty. You did a tape of Murder Beats. He was in the next room. Okay. Um, designer. I seen Designer one time. Jeez. Designer was in Atlanta. He was, he was like hype on his regular hype shit. I see them. He's in the next year doing his hype shit. So yeah, that was like, it's different. Cause in, in the States, it's like, you see a lot of artists that it's like, Oh, I forgot about that one. I forgot about him. So it's yeah. like, it's easier to lock him with those ones where it's like the hotter artists you're seeing them walk. Like I seen the baby. He's walking with mad security, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. So yeah. So, um, let's get into like, you yourself, right? And and also, um, introduce yourself to the, to the audience because I don't want to like leave this the man with a mic without a without a word. Uh, you already know I'm bugs. Yeah, not bugs. bugs. Not <laughs> bugs. Yeah, yeah. Get it correct. Get it correct. It's not bugs. It's bugs. And, and before we continue, right? Gutsy was talking to you off camera about going viral. Yeah. Put me on, man, because I'm, I'm a old head fan. <laughs> you didn't see it? Nah, fam. You know me. Basic, right? basically, I'm all over the place. Basically, what happened was I was shooting a music video and mm -hmm. um, some of the young men from the area, or boys, sorry, not man, you're not a man yet, but a boy from the area, been begging me to be in the videos and stuff like that. So I got into the video. Um... He came, he, he, under, he overstood the assignment. Mm -hmm. So he came dressed down, you know what I mean? And whatever not. And um, there was a scene where uh, we had money. So I thought instead of me holding the money, we pass it off to this young man. Yeah. But then when I passed him the money, it was like I was hearing the commentary in the background and everybody was just, just melting a bunch of shit. Yeah. And then I was like, yo, at that moment, I was like, yo, let me turn to him quickly. And like, let him know, like, don't get too carried away with this this stuff. Like, and then I just broke it down to him like that. So happened that somebody caught that on film. Mm -hmm. um, and then I ended up posting it on my story. My brother Gutsy Guts asked me for the video as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, I guess six months got wind of it and then ended up just posting it. And then it went viral. And that's just how that went. Really, okay. I was just being myself. Truthfully. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't really... It wasn't like, I didn't know the cameras were even rolling. I was just, I didn't want him to get confused. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. shit, like, like, this is a video. We're shooting a video. So what you see in a video is what you see in a video. What you hear in the lyrics is the lyrics, but understand that there's more to life and you don't have to pick certain show. paths. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so, I, I, I could see that you see what's, I can't stop your environment, 
But at the same time, I can tell you that, trust me, brother, there's there's better options out there for you. Yeah, yeah, that's really what's what's also dope about it is it's like a positive thing that went viral. Mm-hmm. It's not so like yeah, the food is yeah, so yeah, 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 no options. Yeah, 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 facts. Viral, right? So that's certainly sure. dope. Facts, facts. facts. Yeah, I'm digging that. I'm digging that. So so let's get into you with with you portion. Like um I was watching some content earlier and I and I found out like that you got your name portion from your bro. Mm-hmm. But what does the NF stand for? Yeah, NF is um, nonfiction. Okay, like a collective of um, different. Just everybody that is a part of this, like you know, mm-hmm. come up that we're about to do. So yeah, just just um, producers, everybody, you know, yeah. that's nonfiction. And then um, in terms of my name, I got that for my bro. Yeah, just coming up, mm-hmm. just stuck. You know? Okay, okay, and like you know, you you were start. I would say 2018, like I said, you got on my radar, right? Uh-huh. But what, 2015 is around the time when you started rapping. Around that time, no? Yeah, yeah. Right? Lot, well, yeah. So let me see. Are you fucking with. Mm. He's trying to find your inspirations. Yeah, 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 yeah. But before <laughs> you tell me, I'm trying. 50 Cent. What, in 2015? No, no, not back then. I'm talking <laughs> about when you were younger, before you even got oh, into yeah, it. Yeah, no, for sure. For 50. sure, for sure, 50. Who else, who else? Um, Dipset Heavy. Mmm, Dipset, right, but, Dipset. Yeah, just as I grew older, it was like different shit, you know, like Future, Gucci, mm-hmm. um, Lil Wayne, Heavy. It's everybody really, and just growing, growing up, you just adapted in different styles and shit. Yeah. So, so like you, you were you were more of a lyrical lyrical guy before, and then you started like what listening yeah, to like, some future and you're like, well, this. <laughs> nah, it's like for me, it's like as I go as I went on mm. and got older, I just started to listen to just adapt to different styles. So like you know, yeah. So that's why maybe like you heard um Fist Rub. Mm-hmm. I was more like rapping on there, and like now my music's more like melodic or so. Yeah. But yeah, just just adapting over time. Do you prefer to do like the rap or the melodic? Definitely melodic shit. Yeah. I definitely at this point definitely melodic shit. I feel like at twenty fifth, well twenty seventeen, mm-hmm. I was in a transition phase and just finding my my sound, my voice, everything. Yeah. So yeah, that was just that. Um, what about even with that? And like before we move on to the next question, because like you're not different than a lot of rappers who are like in your age group and like you know what I mean, who started around that time, like you know, lyrics and like the time changes in hip hop, right? But like, do you think that you can turn that back on if you want to? Definitely. For sure. For sure. But yeah. I feel like it's, it, it shows in the music still if you like, when you hear the tape, you'll hear, hear more. But um, it's just different times, I feel, different beat selections, different, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> but like, when it comes down to, you know, I, I still, getting my bars back. Like, I still pay attention to that shit. I still know, like, okay, Benny the Butcher. Mm. I still know these niggas, like, you know? So, yeah. Like, I just pay attention. Like, I'm just a music guy, so it's just like, I fuck with that shit. Like, anything that is music, I fuck with. And you think that's, sorry, you think that's what Toronto is missing? The fact that you said that, like, it's music instead of, like, everybody trying to reach for something else and that puts you in, like, a different position? Yeah, definitely. I feel like when it comes to me, I just kind of stick to what I do, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, just follow that path. But yeah, Toronto, definitely. I feel like we like. There's a few artists that are doing it, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. Overall, we definitely need to more focusing on the music rather than like the um politics of the shit. You know? Yeah, yeah there's yeah. a lot of politics in this shit. So it's like, you know, you could go down two routes. Really, that's how I look at it. So mm-hmm. I'm just trying to um focus on my route and do what I do. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not really collab heavy though, even like when we get to like talking about the Toronto stuff, right? I are you open to it? You just dropped something. Yeah, yeah. Just something. Yeah, so um I'm are you open to like collabing? Yeah, I'm definitely one? open to collabing, like as long as like, you know, like I said, there's politics behind certain shit, but as long as there's no politics behind certain shit, then I'm good with it. Is that know? is that like kind of scare you away though? Like not really, it's just like how to if Toronto. somebody had Somebody that's into politics. It has nothing to do with you when no. you're into politics and they want to do a song with you. No, because everybody knows what I stand on. Everybody knows who I am. So it's like, they know I'm not involved in your politics. I'm not from here or wherever you're from. So, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's music at the end of the day. Dope. I fuck with a lot of niggas that have politics with each other. It is what it is. But 
I'm not from yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I feel like when it gets to a certain point with the people, you have to pick a side, you know? Like, if I'm to link up with this nigga and keep on linking with them, you're going to have to pick a side because when I'm going to see... Uh, I'm not really with the playing two sides of the fence shit. If you're just music, it's just music. You're not picking a side. Exactly. You're doing music, right? No, but I'm saying if it's frequent, if it's like, okay, you did a one song, cool. But if you're just linking up, linking up with them on the off days, on the... (laughs) No, if you're linking up, yeah. Because you're liable to get Anything that happens to them on the off days can happen to you on the off days. Yeah, so then, let's just say you link up with somebody, you guys just back, like the chemistry is just there. No, yeah, but that's like what I'm saying. Then at that point, right at that it's point, like it's a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. You know what I'm saying? At that point, you have to choose a side. That's what I mean. Where it's choose. like you're not gonna go out of your way to go beef with their ops, but you're gonna be like, okay, I'm on. Like I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're on song four now. I guess we. we do. <laughs> 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 hey, like, come on, my nigga. I don't have to be. You know what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't want you to go link up with my op at a studio session and come to my studio session. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I never thought about the studio session parts. <laughs> like, yo, were you hanging out with the niggas? Yeah, 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 yeah my nigga. Like, you're hanging out. You're in the same places as these niggas, bro. Yeah, it's true, it's true, it's true. So, and who knows what, what's I seen Tony right? Savage on uh, Academics on podcast talking about that same shit. Mm-hmm. Also, it's real shit. Yeah. So even like if you and um, you hear feedback? Huh? No, I'm not, I, thought, I thought I heard feedback. Um, okay. Even speaking of like ends and stuff like that, you grew up in the East End, right? Oh. Give us some some insight on you, like before you got into the rapping over there in the East End. Like, what was a regular day for like for portion pre portion times? <laughs> regular shit, really. Like regular shit that happens to every. Neighborhood across the world, like, you know, mm-hmm. get into your, your, your little trouble as a kid, whatever. Sell your little whatever you're selling and do whatever you're doing. And yeah, it's what it is, you know? Yeah. You don't really think of it as like poverty when you're in a you Like, you're just thinking of it as, yeah, I'm having fun. I'm just living life, you know? Who was always thinking about doing music back then? Yeah. Yeah, because my older brother was rapping, so mm-hmm. he was always like an inspiration. But <clears throat> at a certain time, it was like, I was like, fuck rap, you know? Because it wasn't realistic. It was like, what the fuck am I gonna do with this shit? And then uh, 2015, my homie Money passed away. RP. And then, yeah, that's when I started to like, really pick it up and start going hard at it. Mm-hmm. You mentioned your bro in a, in, a, in the interview I seen with It's Too Real, right? And how he was like, he wanted you to rap. Mm. Now I'm in my 40s, okay? Who, 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 you say he rapped. Who, who, who was he? I want to know, fam. Like, who? He's right there. Oh. Uh, battling niggas, doing whatever he had to do to watch okay. him. <laughs> so, so, if I remember, I remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 His face looks so familiar. Was yeah. a legend. Yeah, it was munching, so yeah. Who is? That's a legend. Okay, yeah. so, and, and do you mind, what's, What's your, what's your name again, brother? Oh, that's the problem. In the problem. They call me Wavy now. Okay, okay, okay. And you were on the battle scene, like when Scandalous and all the men were battling? I was, I was on King of, King of the King of the City. King of the Dot. King of the City. King of the City. But I was, I was, like, I, was, I, was I was on, on, on volume one. Okay. I don't have, they don't have volume one online right now. Wow. Yeah, from volume two. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah something to Rocket House. That's yeah. alumni. Real one, real one. Hey, okay. I'm, I'm just putting the connections <laughs> together, you know what I'm saying? So even like, and before I even get into the music part, right? Like, what was high school like? Yeah. You're like the, the like, uh, regular show. I was just like, like there's time different time. people in the, in high school, right? There's the, the super studious guy. There's the class clown. There's the athlete. There's the guy that's cool with everybody. Which one do you fall into? I wasn't cool with everybody. I was just like doing my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> I just do my own thing. Come to come to school, do my own thing. Just you know, yeah, just regular school shit. And you're a tall nigga. I was just like, sorry, could you keep you at a certain point? I was just, <clears throat> I was just like, um, I was hustling, so I was just go to school to show off my new J's type shit. So <laughs> at that point, it was just new J's every weekend. Mm. Um, but as you get older, you start realizing what the fuck life's really about. So, yeah. And, and you're, you're a tall nigga. You're, you're, you're not a basketball nigga, bro? 
No. <laughs> I'm I'm like I'm right handed, but I shoot left. So you can <laughs> <laughs> some magic. No, I'm the same fan. Don't worry, I yeah, got you. So nah, I'm, I, I was I was into ball up to a certain point, but then like I don't know. In high school, I was just not really into that. Yeah. In high school, I was really just I didn't think any like I didn't think rap or ball was going to take me anywhere. I was just on the street shit. So. Yo, what were your grades trying. like? What your grades? My grades. Yeah. My grades were okay. I was like. I was more the student that would like finesse my way into shit. Like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you get like, somebody to do your work yeah, and shit. This person to do my work. Like, yeah, <laughs> I was, I was, like I said, I was hosting at the time, so I get, I have a blackberry with all the answers. Holy, oh, like, <laughs> but yeah, like I was close to the school was close to my my um where I live, so it was just that's what really made me like go through with it type mm. shit because it was just right there. Anytime I need to leave and do anything, I'll leave, you know? There, yeah. there wasn't anything that, like, got you engaged in there? Like, they didn't, you don't feel like nah, school like, ain't doing their job? Nah, I'm like, tunnel vision, like, I don't need people around me. I don't need mm. extra energy. I don't need nothing. So, like, yeah, you know, I'm matter. very much by myself, you know, mm-hmm. most of the time when it comes to shit. So, it's like, with that shit, I was, like, tunnel vision with that shit. Okay. Yeah. This show is brought to you by Manscaped and the Lawnmower 4.0. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code We Love Hip Hop at manscaped.com. 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com when you use the code We Love Hip Hop. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Before we continue this episode, I want to give a big salute to Canopy Delivery. They got me real toasty right now. Make sure to hit up hit up their website, CanopyDelivery.ca. I'll spell it out for you. So that's C-A-N-N as in November, A-B-E-E. So get it, Canopy, the bzzz, and you'll be able to get your buzz on. Make sure to hit them up, Canopy Delivery. Hit them up on their email address also, CanopyDelivery at gmail.com. You'll be able to get your hands on your what you need real, real quick. You know what I'm saying? They got bud. They got shatter. I got some grab up from them, too. And they'll be able to deliver it to anywhere in the GTA within two hours. Make sure to hit them up once again on their website, canopy.ca. And make sure to use the code We Love Hip Hop. Mention We Love Hip Hop to get a discount on any of their products. OK, and, and you know, when you salute Canopy and when you support Canopy, you support the We Love Hip Hop network. So make sure to hit them up right Right now, get your buzz on Canopy, Canopy.ca, and use the code We Love Hip Hop. Salute to Canopy.ca, supporting the We Love Hip Hop network all the time. Salute Canopy.ca. Yeah. And and like you mentioned, like your bro getting you in, into like encouraging, like pretty much like pushing you. You should rap, right? Oh. So what do you think that he's seen in you? That made it like, yo, fam, like you really need to do this. Cause fam, like, look where you are now. Like you're signed, you're, you're doing your fucking thing, fam. So obviously he was right. <laughs> right? So what do you think that he's seen in you that made him th- push I you think so hard? It was around the time when my homie passed, mm-hmm. when money passed, um, just the type of music that I was making, I was just able to like express my pain, mm-hmm. you know? And that's really what got me to where, where you hit like the ambitions of protects where it's like, okay, I can be more versatile with it, you know? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I just, I think he just heard that pain in it. Mm-hmm. Heard that pain in my music and just really thought, you know, we could take it to the next level. And uh, over time, I just started to make different type of songs, different type of flows, different type of melodies. You know, so we just started to release different type of music. As, as you can see, like, throughout the years, my music has changed, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You were talking about like LA and how LA just the movements just just across the border. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like Toronto has a proper infrastructure for artists to like succeed properly? Mm-hmm. Not just on a like Not internet me. sensation level. I would say that they have a good we actually have a good like internet base in terms of like all our like social media platforms like six buzz and all that shit because in LA and shit you don't even know where to go find like the underground LA music like you know mm-hmm. like I'll ask my homie where do you find it he'll just tell me where to mouth like yeah, you know like it's yeah. still like back in the days out there like 
in terms of like, yeah, who's popping in the streets for real? Like, you know, so yeah. down here, it's like we have like a million pages in order to like get out your music. So even when I was independent, we would find ways to find ourselves on those blogs, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, like down here, we definitely have a good social media presence. That's why a lot of people are tuned into Six Buzz. Yeah. Or even your guys, like Pusha, I still did your guys' podcast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. A lot of cities don't have that, you know? So we're, we're pretty good, but in terms of like um, studios and just networking with artists, there's just not enough artists out here. Mm -hmm. It's just only our artists, like people from Toronto. Like LA and shit is like people that's not from LA being LA. People yeah. that's not from wherever. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. People come from all people over the world. People come from all States. over the world to, to come to LA. So it's like, yeah. yeah. You know, that, that's, that's, it's that's, just more of a mixing pot out there. Yeah, and um, like even like you linked up with with Warner now, right? How did that happen? Kind of? How did that come to fruition? Like, where you go from independent and you're doing your thing, and like you get on the even like on the radar of the labels. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of artists they're trying to achieve that, fam, and they're like they don't know have any idea how to fucking get there. Yeah, I think I think for me it was just like just staying consistent, putting on music. Um, I dropped "Slime Me Out." Mm -hmm. Big Step and Born Sinner. Those three songs like maybe like three weeks apart each. Okay. And then Savage. No, that was early in the year. Savage, um, Legends Don't Die and Blessed It Could Be Worse. That was early in the year. That was all 2020. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I was just about to yeah, say that's so, 2020. Exactly. So um by the end of 2020 when I released Slam Me Out, it um I was I was like promoting it for a long time mm -hmm. throughout the year. So I put it up in May and I released it in October. So by the time I released it in October, like a lot of the um playlisting had caught on to it and shit. Mm -hmm. And then I got onto Northern Bars. And then that's when um the people that wanna hit me up off mm -hmm. of hearing me on Northern Bars and shit. Dope, dope, dope. So now like you get to you know, you sign with the label, you know, um you're, you know, you've been moving around in LA and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. But like now going there on the strength of like, you know, getting to see a little bit more behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you might have seen behind the scenes that you weren't aware of before signing? Um, it's crazy because a lot of the shit that I'm doing now that I'm signing is the same shit I was doing before I was signed. So Interesting. It's not really much of a difference in terms of um the states because mm -hmm. <clears throat> I just be doing shit for my own, like, you know? We just be making it happen, so yeah, um, yeah. It hasn't really been much of a difference, really. It's just putting out the music and having a platform. Mm -hmm. You know, like I feel like I make a certain type of music where, like, it needs to be marketed, it needs to be, you know. Yeah, yeah. I need my music to hear. It's for the world type shit. Mm -hmm. so it's like, that. do you feel like? Because I'm watching other artists in the states, like you know, like yourself. I see Pressa moving around. And I see the, a few different, a smiley, you know what I'm saying? But like our scene over here, for us, y'all are fucking stars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But out there, I've heard Presser saying in interviews, like it's like he's, you know, he's working on making people know him out there. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's harder because it's like you're being a smaller, and not to use the word fish, but a smaller fish in a big pond? Yeah. Um. Yeah, definitely. And just because there's so much artists in the States. Mm -hmm. So that when you're here and you stand out, you know, you have to go over there and stand out. Right? Yeah. There's so many artists. There's so many artists, you know? And it's like, yeah, like a lot of artists you meet on the come up out there too. You know, mm -hmm. you meet artists from LA on the come up. Like Kaylin, for real, I met Matt early. You yeah. Know? So, um, yeah, just like, just like working out there is different, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you gotta gotta adapt to the workflow. Right? Yeah, yeah. They work fast. They work, you know. So when you when you're getting on these um platforms that the states has, you have to make sure that you're really putting your your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. Really just giving your all. Yeah, shit, you know? yeah, yeah. What's like a regular studio session like for you? Like, how many songs are you banging out in a session? Depends. I'm not really like. I'm not really like a quantity. I'm more, I'm more of a quality, you know? Mm -hmm. We'll sit on one song for the whole session if it's like, if we feel like it's a, if it's a hit. Okay. You know? If it's, if it's something, but some songs I made fast, like ties I made in like, maybe like two hours. Mm -hmm. Maybe an hour, you know? 
um, the hook, the hooks usually come easy. And then like the verses and like the outro and like the structure of the shit, that's when it's like a little bit more tricky because you're trying to keep interest throughout the whole song, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's really what, that's really what we focus on. Yeah. We focus bar for bar. Okay, okay, okay. Million dollars worth of game. How was that? Yeah. <laughs> Man, that was a game. That was in a, I was in LA. Man, the ball up in the air and shit, fam. Yeah. <laughs> I was in LA. I was in LA. That shit was crazy. Did you know just about it? Or was it nah, just like... They, just... they hit me like a week before and they called me and they're like, yo, like, how do you say your name or some shit like that? Mm-hmm. Like, you know? But we we're just talking for a bit. He's just like, yo, I like your song, whatever, whatever. But I never knew he was going to play it on the shit. And then when it came out, like, everybody just hit my phone. Like, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, the DMs probably know, went nuts. I didn't know that it was, I didn't even know the show was that big. Like, I watched the show and shit, but like, I don't really be tuning into like subscribers and like all this shit. So when it's like, when you see how much fucking traction you get after, I'm like, holy, I didn't know it was that big. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got Giddy to do the <laughs> nah. fucking song. <laughs> nah, for sure. He came back with his nah, bro, like, sure. I just thought, nice. Yeah, that shit was hype. That shit was hype. Yeah, um, man. Cool. Yeah, man. Um, Okay, I want to get, get a little, ask a little mixy question because you mentioned that you had an issue back at the border back in 2018, but you never fucking mentioned what the issue was. I where want to you, know what the issue was. Where do you hear that? I was watching, I did my <laughs> research, man. You're doing your research, eh? You're doing your research for real. Um, <laughs> that was 2018. I, do, man. I was actually going to meet my bro in LA. And I've been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth the whole time, and it's like, this one time, I got like the worst fucking whatever they were called, the fucking at the border. The dig down. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> they put me into the secondary and then they're just like, Bro. Oh, no, they put you in the next dig, room. Yeah, they dig down everything and then they're like, you're good, but we're going to check if you have any warrants, you know? And then when they checked if I had, I don't know what made them do that. They checked if I had any warrants and then it's like, yo, oh. it I started to see like, Three feds coming. Then I started to see like two more. I'm like, no, nah, it's going down. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's going down. Ooh, so there, was no, I was literally in the airport. I was in the airport. I like, I kept on going back and forth. I, I don't know like what this time made me, them send me to secondary, but they sent me to secondary and fuck. No, no, no. I didn't, they didn't know I had a warrant. They didn't know I had a warrant. They mm. checked the hat if I had a warrant, like, um, during the process, you know? Right. I think they just put me in secondary just because, you know? Damn, like, man. Going through the border all the time. Listen, sure. that's just that. 2018, we 2021 now. Yeah, exactly. We're good. Yeah, yeah, back then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just was like, I'm there watching, like, I, I was watching the interview, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, so we, you're not going to ask him what happened? <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> nah, Shit, it, nigga. it was just, yeah, at the time, it just threw me off from my rap shit for a bit. So that's mm-hmm. the reason why you never got really nothing until like late 2020. 2019, 2020. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, like, remember I told you yeah, in the beginning yeah, yeah. of this, you were on the radar for me from 2018 yeah. and you had a slew of tunes, mm-hmm. but then you went yeah, dark for a second. I only released two songs and then one of them I didn't even really promote. Yeah. I ended up taking it down like three months later. And then, Ambitions of the tech, and that's it. You know? So, mm. yeah, it was just pretty much just grinding that whole like year and just making the right music, making the right change, you know? And then, like, I couldn't go to um, the States. So it was just throwing me off my whole creative process. My whole, this guy was out there living life in LA on Melrose. <laughs> I was just like, nah, <laughs> I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. I was making some different type of music. So I was just like, yeah, let me take a little break off of this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, fam, I'm glad that everything's like going in a positive direction now, fam. Oh, definitely. definitely. Yo, the tune with you and Box, you guys got going on. Mm-hmm. Can we be expecting more with that? Of course. Well, with me and him? Yeah. Oh, 100%. It's my brother for life. Come yeah. on. Before life is. <laughs> was that the first tune that you guys put out together? or? Yeah, that's the first one we put out together. We'll so, have a couple more in the can, but yeah. I'm going to try to make some more shit. Put it out. Okay, okay, okay. What's the name of the track? Oh, Drip Check. Drip Check. Drip Check, yeah. What about the... Do you make the concepts for your video? Yeah. For that video, no. That was his, that was his vibe. But 
for most of my videos, yeah, I make I make all the concepts like slam me out. That mm -hmm. one was crazy with the horses and shit. I just be like yeah, coming I up know. with different ideas, smoking weed, just be like, yo, let me do this. Cause at that time we were just trying to get we we're just trying to figure out how we can get more like traction and shit without it being like too or doing too much. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like we just tried to think of different ways to um come at this shit, you know? Yeah. What's yeah. the one with the black where you had all the black balloons on the floor? That's not me on? No, that's hella clean. That's that's more recent. That's my last video I put up. That's, like even that, like yeah. fam, like, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Are you gonna that's do? crazy because I caught that that one. I called the label. I'm like, yo, listen to me. This video, I'm just gonna write the treatment. I don't want to even talk to no director. I don't want to do nothing, none of that. Mm -hmm. I just sent them the treatment. I sent them word by word with what exactly I wanted, what color the balloon should be. All that. So it's like, that's hard. That's hard. Okay, hold on. Because I want to go behind that's hard. That's hard. You feel like, it might be too personal, but do the labels know sometimes what they're doing? Like, you feel like sometimes, like, they might not know what they're doing with you when they send you concepts and shit like that? It's no, they, like, don't even tr they don't even try that with me, honestly, because they know that, you know, like, I record myself. I do most of this shit by myself. I manage myself. Mm -hmm. I do everything myself, so. Don't even ask me that type of shit. They just let me make the music, pick who I want to direct it. But sometimes I'll let the director come up with an idea and then mm -hmm. I'll be like, take out this, take out this, take out this, put this. Yes. You know? Like with um ties, I'm like, yo, put the fire head scene, like with, with like my head on fire and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just like different shit. So, you know? Cool. Um Yeah, different concepts um for different songs and yeah, I just go go about it. Every song different. Every song is different, you know? No, no, I'm fucking with that, man. Like, you know, we're the, the position that you're you're in and then you're going to, right? You know, there's not a lot of Toronto rappers. Like, there are a few, but, you know, I feel like there could be way more because, you know, I think there's a lot of talent out here. There's a lot of guys who are coming from different ends who, who rap, right? What do you think that we can do in Toronto to, for the whole scene to take it to the next level so we can be like an Atlanta or something? I think just working together. I just seen from this, me and him just putting out that song, it was just like a lot of like camaraderie, you know? Mm -hmm. Our fans both linking up. I got a lot of his fans just posting my shit. I'm like, hey, they're tuning in, you know? So I was I was really happy with the release of that song. So just like, I just want to see him go up in terms of that. And yeah. Fucking everybody in the city should just work together type shit. And that's how they do in Atlanta. Like in Atlanta, I was in a studio session with Kaylin. Mm -hmm. He did a song with every single artist in the room. There was like five artists who all sat there through each song, wow. including me. So, yeah. That's sick. Yeah, we just, they, they work we're just talking about this. Like, if the city came together and every man came together and just said, okay, fuck it. Yeah, they work different. Let's just get it's, a bag. It's, like, hard, you know it's, hard, it's, hard, it's hard, though, as, like, as, as, as because um, I feel like the, the times that we're living in, mans are too. Um, personal and like emotional like yeah. you, know, you know like with the beef and stuff like that like so yeah. it's like like what he said right like if we could connect more like if it's that real the politics i understand it but some politics ain't even really like that and it's like we could still work brother yeah. like you know what i mean like yeah. i get it but nah bro you know what i mean <laughs> No, straight up, straight up. No, and even like you mentioned something like that was like that stood out to me even in that session you're talking about. Mm -hmm. He did a set, he did a song with everybody in the room. Mm -hmm. How are you even gonna get these motherfuckers in the same room, oh, bro? Exactly. It was crazy. That's what I'm saying. Me just seeing that, I was just like, that's different, like, you know? Yeah, like all these different artists in the same room. Just imagine like mm -hmm. the bonuses of that, all that creative energy, all the different ideas that can exactly. be there. If we can make that over here, imagine how many bangers would come out of this fucking city. Bro. But unfortunately, fam, let's be real. The guys that get a lot of play in the city, they're not really like music guys. Like they don't really care for the music like that. Mm. They just made a one, two songs. Their brother said it was hot. They got a one, two play on a blog. And that's the reason why they're not hot, fam. But they're not really trying to go make music with certain man because next man's music is dope. They don't even want to say next man's music is dope because they're from a next man. Exactly. In Atlanta, same thing. Yeah. Young fella will have a problem with that nigga, but if the nigga makes a fire tune, yeah, that tune is exactly. fire. I'm not, they're not going to deny yeah. that. Yeah. Our city is too petty for that, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's like a different city. I feel like. Yeah, it's just different, you know? 
But it's, it has its it has its positives. Like when I when I come back to the city from LA, wherever I go, it's like it feels good to be home. Right? Mm-hmm. So it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, man. Because in America, music changed your life in two months. Mm. If you wait for that music. Over here, fam, you don't change your life like that. You still call you for oh, that. Down here, you can have a million views and you can live in the hood still. Like, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And down yeah. In, in the States, it's like different. Even America could blow up overnight. Over here, fuck no way. You better put in that work. Yeah. Just like you said, this guy dropped how many tracks? What was it? Four, five, six? You said mm-hmm. in what twenty, whatever it was. Twenty twenty, brother. And then it took that long for people to even take him in. Like, what are you talking about? You know that's work yeah. to me personally. How I see it, yeah. that's putting in work. Yeah. Like, how is not everybody tapped into him at that point from the first two? Yeah, you know well, what I mean. That's, that's how I see it. Our city, it's just different. You know, you have to have the right. Promotion, you have to be from it's everything is like mm-hmm. falls in place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm not mad at where I'm at, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at either. Man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like this interview is long overdue. You know what I'm saying? Nah, definitely. Like, I, I've been watching the movement and, and I've been like, yo, this nigga's he's, 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 he's different. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got a big show, bro. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we're supposed can- to be here from 2017, right? 2018. Fam, like I feel like no, there's no time like the present because look at where you're at now. You no, know what I'm saying? Sure. We have a lot more to talk about now. Exactly, exactly. Definitely. Yeah, man. NF portion in the mother building. Glad y'all made it to the end of this video. And if you like this video right here, we got a couple more for y'all to choose from right here. And make sure to like and subscribe, okay? And make sure to share this video to a friend and tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend that the We Love Hip Hop Network is the leading network in Canada. Cheer!